Hi, Calgary. It's good to be here. It's spring. I was prepared for to be freezing cold and for me to feel like a wimpy East Coaster. But today I was just the overdressed person. I'm just going to do a poem first that will tell you a little bit about myself. Subtlety was never my specialty. And so, without much thought to consequence, I showed my heart and soul to many. I left little guessing I was that book lying open in full view, unprotected. Some people told me I should close it up. At least choose more carefully which pages to show, maybe don't expose so much. Apparently, there is an appropriate amount of sharing and I overdo it. People are only comfortable up to a certain point and yet I go right through it. Well, maybe I missed the training. That day they went over closed book and open book and how much was too much information. Or else I was there but the lesson must have lost me. Because I thought its elements were slightly off and how could they possibly be the same for us all. These days I am trying to find a fine balance with this. Give people a view of my sincere self while keeping some things concealed within. Because I was told that I should. And I'm curious to see what it might get me, and I'm hoping it could be something good, like improved defenses, or a heart less tormented. Because if I didn't let as many people in it to begin with, I would be less likely to be injured when they left it. If I could be more subtle, no one would know when I was broken. As it stands right now, though, I tend to break right open spill out over coffee shop tables and try not to be noticed by the other patrons because people don't like to see random strangers crying. It makes them anxious. If I could be more subtle, I wouldn't make anybody anxious. I wouldn't make them order their coffees to take away because they were afraid if they got them to stay, I would ask to borrow their hankies. Not I would be normal, meaning discreet. And this could be sort of amazing. But... Subtlety was never my specialty, and so maybe it's going to be hard to suddenly start changing, holding people away, knowing when to keep them out and when to bring them close and how to differentiate. Anyway, I want people to know me. That means the whole me, the true soul in me, all the many parts of me, the fragile and the tortured and the happy human heart in me. And so subtlety is just never going to be my specialty. So I play songs too. I'm going to play a couple poem songs. A couple years ago I called these pongs. <laughs> you can call them soems, whatever. I find it hard to differentiate sometimes. Poem songs. This is from my last record, not the one I just put out. They're both out there on a table. Available for purchase. But uh, this one it's about religious tolerance. You guys have that out here? <laughs> Give us this day our daily baked good. Whatever it is that makes us feel good. If you kneel to pray on slats of wood, and I'll walk streets at break of day to see what I could. Is this not the same so long as we all worship as we should? Give me the earth and all of her daughters. You can have yours, your son and his father. I'll worship my idols. You burn candles at your altar. And we'll all get along just like our gods wanted. Give me some wine, sure, but I'll take mine chilled. And I'll try not to get too drunk on your hymn book spill. I'll sing your songs for the harmonies and the thrill. This building with its organ and this congregation's will. Lilting voices in the rafters they fill. Give us this day and pray if you want to. 
to each our own way that is all that I want from you Give me the peace that you are all dying to have I will give you respect I will expect it back Oh Um, thanks a lot to Sherry D and all the team here that brought me all the way from Halifax. It's really awesome to get uh, to come here. And I'm staying in a nice hotel. I got there today and there were magazines about food, so I sat, <laughs> I was hungry. So I sat and read my magazine about where to eat in Calgary for like two hours. And then I couldn't decide where to eat and I had a low blood sugar moment. <laughs> anyway, it was, I had a good day. This is a song from my latest record. Uh, I wrote it after I had an unsuccessful conversation with my mother about my desired funeral arrangements. And I don't want you to bury me. Please say that you won't, even though that makes you sad. My ashes don't bury me Throw me to the wind It's where I want to be Cars in a solemn line down a long dirt road Let the trees see you cry then let me go If you pray for me To whomever you like Whatever deity But don't take me To a funeral parlor I do not like the atmosphere I wouldn't want to say goodbye there Placing sad songs on weeping strings Gather up at my house, take all my things Send me off with a mighty feast And remember, don't bury me Did anybody bring a church organ? It's your solo right now. fun. Um, uh, yeah. I have so much bambling I could do, but I only have 15 minutes, so shh, Tanya, stop talking. Mm -hmm. 
This is a song about art. Uh, it's called Art. Oh, it's on my last record. Um, my friend Andrea Dorfman, who actually made the video for How to Be Alone, she also did a really cute animation to this. You can, you can YouTube it. Um, my mom, when she heard this song, she said, Tanya, who's Art? She was very hopeful. I said, don't worry. He's not like a really trustworthy accountant or something. It's just uh, this unreliable career path I'm following. It's okay, Mom. I wondered what would be the words of my words in the world. If I write them and then recite them, are they worth being heard? Just because I like them, does that mean that I should mic them and see what might unfurl? And I think of the significance of my opinions here. Is it significant to be giving them? Does anybody care? Just because I'm into this, does that mean that I should live like it? And really, do I dare? Art, art, I want you. Art, you make it pretty hard not to. My heart is trying hard here to follow you, but I can't always tell if I ought to. So I pondered the points of my art in this life. If I make it, will someone take it and think that it's genuine? Would they be glad that I did because they got something good out of it? Would they leave me and be any more inspired? And I question the outcome of the outpouring of myself. If I tell everyone my stories, would this keep me healthy and well? Would it give me purpose and to the world some sort of service? Is it worth it? How could I tell? keep meaning to learn a really fancy guitar solo here. Art, art, I want you. Art, you make it pretty hard not to. My heart is trying hard here to follow you, but I can't always tell if I ought to. Art, art, I want you. Art, you make it pretty hard not to And my heart is trying hard here To follow you, but I can't always tell if I ought to Thank you. How about this guy? I'm just going to do a poem to end it. So I just have one more um, piece for you guys. And thanks again for, for listening and being awesome. I hope to tour back to Calgary another time. It's far away from where I live, but... I just came back, actually, from a tour, in, uh, and we drove across the prairies, like, about a month ago. It's weird that I'm back here already, con considering I haven't been here for, like, five years. But anyway, um, so I'm going to do this poem that's about being alone. Um, I spend a lot of time alone. I like being alone, but I also like people. I feel like if I spend a lot of time alone, then I'm better with people later. So for those of you who haven't seen this video, it's on the internet. It's called How to Be Alone, and you can YouTube it. Isn't it cool that YouTube... When did YouTube become a verb? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, thanks a lot for listening, and thanks again to the festival for having me and this uh, place for having us. If you are at first lonely, be patient. If you've not been alone much, or if when you were, you weren't okay with it, just wait. You'll find it's fine to be alone once you're embracing it. Start with the acceptable places, the bathroom, the coffee shop, the library, where you can stall and read the paper, where you can get your caffeine fix and sit and stay there, where you can browse the stacks and smell the books. You're not supposed to talk much anyway, so it's safe there. There's also the gym. If you're shy, you can hang out with yourself in mirrors. You can put headphones in. And there's public transportation, because we all got to go places. And there's prayer and meditation. No one will think less if you're hanging with your breath, seeking peace and salvation. Start simple. Things you may have previously avoided based on your avoid being alone principles. The lunch counter. 
where you will be surrounded by chow downers, employees that only have an hour and their spouses work across town and so they, like you, will be alone. Resist the urge to hang out with your cell phone. When you are comfortable with eat lunch and run, take yourself out for dinner, a restaurant with linen and silverware. You're no less intriguing a person when you're eating solo desserts and cleaning the whipped cream from the dish with your finger. In fact, some people at full tables will wish they were where you were. Go to the movies, where it is dark and soothing, alone in your seat amidst a fleeting community, and then take yourself out dancing to a club where no one knows you. Stand on the outside of the floor until the lights convince you more and more and the music shows you. Dance like no one's watching, because they're probably not. <laughs> and if it is, assume it is with best and human intentions. The way bodies move to beats is, after all, gorgeous and affecting. Dance until you're sweating, and beads of perspiration remind you of life's best things, down your back like a brook of blessings. Go to the woods alone. Trees and squirrels will watch for you. Rome, an unfamiliar city, there are always statues to talk to. And benches made for sitting give strangers a shared existence, if only for a minute. And those conversations you get in by sitting alone on benches may have never happened had you not been there by yourself. Society is afraid of alone, though. Like lonely hearts are wasting away in basements. Like people must have problems if, after a while, nobody is dating them. But alone is a freedom that breathes easy and weightless, and lonely is healing if you make it. You could stand swathed by groups and mobs or hold hands with your partner. Look both further and farther in the endless quest for company. But no one's in your head. And by the time you translate your thoughts, some essence of them may be lost, or perhaps it is just kept. Perhaps in the interest of loving oneself. Perhaps all those sappy slogans from preschool over to high school's groaning were tokens for holding the lonely at bay. Because if you're happy in your head, then solitude is blessed and alone is okay. It's okay if no one believes like you. All experience is unique. No one has the same synapses, can't think like you, for this be relieved. Keeps life interesting, life's magic things in reach. And it doesn't mean that you're not connected or that community is not present. Just take the experience you get from being one person in one head and feel the effects of it. Take silence and respect it. If you have an art that needs a practice, stop neglecting it. If your family doesn't get you or a religious sect is not meant for you, don't obsess about it. You could be, in an instant, surrounded if you need it. If your heart is bleeding, make the best of it. There is heat in freezing. Be a testament. Thank you very much.